Imagine the graph of a function f of x. At any point x0 in the x-axis, there is a unique straight line that just touches the function at one point. This line is special because it does not cross the function at two points, just one. The fact that this is true makes this line unique. It is called the tangent line at a point, as long as f is continuous and has no sharp corners. We can find a unique tangent line for each point of the function. Each of these tangent lines form a specific angle with the horizontal line at that point. These angles are very useful to track because they give us a way of quantifying or measuring the steepness of the curve at each point. If you imagine that this function is actually the path of a tiny particle moving on a plane, we can assign a little arrow tangent to the curve at each point, representing what physicists would call linear or tangent velocity. This intuitive picture is very useful because it gives us a sense of what the tangent line at each point tells us. In other words, how fast the function is going up, going down, or simply being stationary at a fixed height. We can consider a tangent line at a specific point with an angle of 45 degrees as having inclination or steepness 1. Following the same logic, a tangent line that forms an angle of 45 degrees, but downwards, has inclination minus 1. For a 0 degree angle, the inclination is 0. And for 90 degrees, the inclination is a very large number. We need a way of tracking the inclination of all these tangent lines at each point. We can do this for all points. And that's the concept of derivative. So, the derivative gives us a way of measuring how fast the function is changing its height. This is extremely useful. For example, let's suppose we want to calculate the limit with x tends to infinity of this function. If we simply replace x with infinity, we will get 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form. It doesn't mean that the limit doesn't exist for x tending to infinity, but we do need to find an alternative way of evaluating this limit. The question here is, which one of these functions goes faster to zero as x tends to infinity? The numerator or the denominator? This is a very important question. For example, notice the pattern in this sequence. You can check by yourself, but the numerator decreases by half and the denominator is squared at each step. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. The general formula for the nth element would be an over bn, which is like that. Both the numerator and the denominator approach zero. But we can clearly see that the denominator tends to zero faster than the numerator. So, the indeterminate form zero over zero can be transformed into a determinate form once we notice that after enough iterations, we'll get to a number that is almost equal to a fixed value divided by zero. In other words, the sequence tends to a number different from zero, so the numerator, over a number very close to zero, the denominator. And thus, we say that the result is infinity, for the same reason that dividing a number infinite times results in zero. Loosely speaking, a fixed number divided by infinity is zero. This is obviously a discrete sequence, but we could easily imagine another problem involving a continuous function, or at least piecewise continuous, like the following function. In order to properly evaluate the limit of this function, for x that tends to infinity, we can apply a method called the L'Hopital rule. So basically, all we are doing here is taking the derivative on top and taking the derivative on the bottom for the numerator and the denominator. And rearranging the terms, we'll clearly see that this limit tends to infinity.
The equation of a line is defined by two parameters, usually denoted as m and c, representing the inclination of the line and the point in which the line crosses the y-axis, respectively. Let's look closely at the numerator's tangent line and try to determine its inclination. As you can see, there is a right triangle here, which lets us conclude that the inclination mn is the opposite side of the triangle with respect to theta n, divided by the adjacent side, so in other words, the side that touches the angle. Why is it relevant? Well, in math, there is a name to the fraction created by dividing the opposite side by the adjacent side, and the name is tangent of the angle. It is a trigonometric function, mn equals tan of theta n. Similarly, with the denominator, we get md equals tan of theta d. This trigonometric function has a very nice visual representation. The tangent of an angle is the length of the segment of line formed by extending this line from the center until it crosses the red vertical line. This length is the inclination of our original function at a specific point. Since our goal is to compare the function in the numerator n of x with the function in the denominator d of x, in order to decide which one goes faster to zero as x tends to infinity, all we actually need to do is compare their inclination at each point. Say that mn over md is 3. Then it means that in the red vertical tangent line, you can fit three lengths of md inside of mn. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to find out the ratio mn over md of all the tangent lines at each point x, as x tends to infinity. Since the inclination m is the derivative at each point, as we've seen earlier, the L'Hopital rule holds for the previous example that we've seen. For a detailed and rigorous proof of the L'Hopital rule, check out the PDF link in the description. If you'd like to learn more, check out this book. Link in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.